Now let's try writing some functions that work with strings. So I've created some strings in main here uh, containing some text, and of course I'm not, I'm using the nice string initializer to do that. Keep in mind that when you use double quotes, there is always a null terminator added for you by the compiler. This string here contains nine characters, but it's stored in an array of size 10. The compiler adds that 10th element with a null terminator, always guaranteed. Um, the first function I want to write is called string length, and it's a rehash of something we already did in the previous video. Uh, and then I want to write functions to copy one string into another and to append one string to another. As many of you probably have noticed in the labs and on the assignment, if you want to copy one array into another, and strings are no exception, you can't just write something like this. You can't just write output equals s1. That doesn't make any sense. If you want to copy between arrays, you have to copy one, element by element using a loop or something between the two things, or by writing a function to do it for you. So we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. First, we're going to write this function string length. And keep in mind that when we write a function that works with strings, and you'll notice here in our function signature, we don't have a parameter for the size of the string. And what that's signaling is, I'm going to hand you a string called s from outside. You know nothing about it besides I'm giving you a pointer to the beginning of some array. And the array just runs over into the distance. You have no idea where it ends. Instead, you have this assurance, it's an array of type char, you have this assurance that if you start walking, you will see characters one at a time, and I promise if I hand you something and tell you that it's a string, that eventually there will be some index that contains a null terminator. And that is the end of the string. It doesn't matter if the original array runs off into the distance. The end of the string is whenever you hit that null terminator. And I guarantee you, if I give you a string, that there will be one. If I forget to put one in, it's not your fault if the function misbehaves. Because if the function requests a string, the caller of the function must provide one. So what do we do here? Well, we do the same thing as before. I'm actually, just like before, I'm going to use two different variables, even though uh, connoisseurs will notice that you do not actually need two variables for this. Uh, I'm going to we'll keep one variable as my index and one to track the length that I've seen so far. I'm just going to start walking at index zero. So I'm going to keep asking the question, is s sub i equal to a null terminator? As long as s sub i isn't, then I guess I'm looking at a valid character. So add one to the length and then increment i so I can queue up for another iteration. When I'm finally done, s sub i, at the last iteration of this loop, when I get down to line 23, that means that i uh, index i must be the index of the null terminator. So the string is over, I have to stop walking. And then I'll return my length. All right, so we'll try that out. And I mentioned, maybe not convincingly in the last video, that this style of loop can be a bit um, difficult at first, and that you actually can get around writing it in some cases, although I didn't make that case very well in the last video. We have to write this kind of loop when we're finding the length of a string. If we can somehow get the length of a string, we can often write the standard array, uh, array style loop that we've been writing, for example, on assignment four in the labs. All right, so we'll try running this. Um, Let's see, that's a good complaint. Okay, so I put a colon instead of a semicolon. Sorry about that, we'll try it again. Um, we'll ignore that unused variable warning. That's just because we haven't gotten through very many exercises yet. Length of S1 is nine. So remember that the length of a string is defined to be the number of actual characters in it. So, you know, letters, numbers, spaces, symbols, whatever, but not the null terminator. It's in there, it's part of the machinery of the array, but it is not part of the string. So this string in this example here is uh, length four, the string raspberry has length nine. Uh, the string grapefruit, pear, pineapple, okay, so nine plus nine is 18. Uh, let's see, um, wait, that's not nine, that's 10. Plus nine is 19, plus four is 23, and then one space is 24, another space is 25. So it looks like the answer is correct. Let's try string copy. So the string copy function is gonna take two uh, arrays as well, and of those, um, let's see, not, okay, so string copy. I give you a string called source, a null terminated string. Notice that in the specification it just says, and a destination array. The destination array is, is empty for our purposes. So let's, uh, let's repurpose my diagram here. So here's my source string, and I also give you a string called dest. Or I'm sorry, not a string, that was my point. The string, the, the destination is just an array. And it's, we don't care what's in it. It could be undefined. It could be anything. It could be garbage. We don't care. It's our job to fill it up. Except we do make the assumption 
that the caller has ensured that the destination array is big enough. Obviously, we don't yet know the length of the string and there's no way to know how big that destination array is, so it's the caller's responsibility to make sure it's big enough. And in main, we can see I made it size 1000. I think that'll take care of it. All right, so I'd like to copy every character from this string to this string. So I'm going to start with this loop. I'm going to walk through, starting at index 0, just like before. Uh, and I'm going to write, uh, let's see, while s sub i is not equal to the null terminator. And then at each step, uh, press page down by accent. And then at each step, I'm going to copy uh, the contents of index i from the source array into the dest array at the same index. And that's one reason I don't need two index variables for this particular problem. Uh, because I'm copying one to one, each index is going directly into the corresponding location in the destination. Let's trace through this. And if you're writing string functions, especially on an exam, and you don't try tracing through one quick example just to catch problems like this, then you would deserve the deduction you get in marks. Because it's really easy to make a mistake, and this piece of code does actually contain a mistake. So let's try running through this. Okay, when i equals 0, is this an alternator? No, copy it in. Is this an alternator? No, copy it in and move along. Index 2, no. Index 3, no. When i equals 4, this is a null terminator. So the loop ends. And the problem is, at line 39, at the end of the function, there is no null terminator in my destination array. It could be that the array, you know, by luck, already had a null terminator there, but I didn't put one there. And on an exam, that means I'm going to lose some marks. Um, if this were a question out of five, we might already be down to two out of five or three out of five. Usually you lose two marks just for, for getting a null terminator because of how important it is that every string contain one. So what I should observe is that when the loop ends, i will equal 4 in this example here, because it's the index of the null terminator. So what I should do is I should install that null terminator directly into the lo that location of the destination array. Um, we'll try running this. Oh, whoops. OK, yeah. Source sub i. And uh, let's see what happens. All right, so there are my copies. There's the copy of S2, and then I copy S1 second because I want to prove another point in a minute. So uh, we can see the copies look, and because I'm printing them inside of brackets, we can see that no extra garbage got copied, which is helpful. Um, what happens if I forget this? And I'm, I'm saying this because I want to head off a uh, mark appeal for the next midterm because I want to make it clear that even if you forget this, it might appear to work in some cases. That doesn't mean the code is correct. Forgetting a null terminator is a big deal. For dramatic effect, I'm going to start by forgetting my null terminator and only copying S2. And there it is. Everything looks good. And so somebody would show up on the midterm and say, I got 3 out of 5 or 2 out of 5, but my code works. See, look, it works. It, the, the string has been copied. And I would say, you didn't have an old terminator, so it's not correct. Why is that a big deal? Without making any other modifications, let's uncomment this second copy. So I'm going to call string copy twice. And I expect if I call it twice, the first time it copies in this string, the second time it copies in this string. I don't want there to be any interference because the output array, I expect, can be recycled as many times as I want. I should be allowed to copy as many strings into that array as I want over time. So just keeping in mind, I don't have a null terminator being added explicitly in my code. Let's try running this. We have this problem. The first step, just by dumb luck, I guess, there was already a null terminator somewhere in S2. And so it appears that the copy succeeded. But on the second step, nobody could consider this to be a successful copy of S1. S1 contains this text only. And yet, when I run, run my string copy function, I get all this junk. And if you think about it, what's obviously happened here is that this string was still in my output array when I started making my second copy. And I copied in all the characters from the word raspberry, but I forgot to cut off the string. I forgot to say, this is the end. Ignore everything else. And so all that junk got left behind. That is a classic sign of forgetting a null terminator. That's why it's a big deal. Because it really is, it ties into the issue of uninitialized memory, which is we shouldn't have to assume that there's already something stuck in that destination array. It's our responsibility to set that copy up to be a valid string. So we'll run this again. After fixing that, we now have our own null terminator, and then the copy is correct again. Uh, I also want to write another version of this. 
So suppose you don't like writing this style of loop because it's ugly and weird and, and it, uh, there's, it, it creates too many unknowns. We have a function that computes the length of a string. We just wrote it. And if you have to write that function, well, you might be out of luck. You have to write this style of loop. But if we already have a function like that, what I could do is figure out the length of my source string and then I could just copy like I'm working with regular arrays. Keep uh, for i equals zero, i less than length, i plus plus, uh, destination sub i equals source sub i. And then at the end, I install my null terminator. I know that the length of the string will always be the same uh, value as the index of the null terminator. So the string pair has length four and index four is indeed where the null terminator is. So I will set dest at length to be the null terminator. And we'll try that. And there it is, the copy still works. So we have lots of options. If we can get the length some other way, you can avoid having to write this loop. But I would encourage you to try writing loops like this. You will get used to it, and it often is, uh, you, when you develop some dexterity with it, it can make a lot of string tasks a bit easier. Um, okay, so this is called string append. And the idea behind this is that I would like to give you two strings, so not just a source and a destination array, but two valid strings, and I want you to tack on the contents of the first string, um, or sorry, the characters in S2, so the contents of this second string, onto the first string. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to doctor my diagram to, um, let's see, here's S1, and here's S2. And then suppose that S2 contained the word pair, and I've got to come up with something. I have to, I'm running out of names of fruit here. That's unfortunate. Um, we'll do, let's see, apple. All right. No, it's too many characters. We'll do lime. Maybe I'll edit this out. I'll edit out me trying to agonize over which types of fruit to use that have the right number of letters. All right, so I give you two strings. And the assumption here is that there's extra space available at the end of the first string. And the goal of the function is to start copying in every character of the second string right at the end of the first string, and always to add that null terminator afterwards. So I copy the letter P into, whoops, into this position here. I copy the letter E into this position, and so on. And then when I'm done, I make sure to copy in that null terminator. All right, so we'll start working on that. So what we might realize here is that I have to use two indices because the index I'm copying out of in my, in my uh, S2 is not necessarily going to be the same as the index I'm copying into. Trying to come up with some way around this is going to be more trouble than it's worth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with two separate indices. I'm going to call them my S2 index, logically, and my S1 index. So S1 index equals 0, S2 index equals 0. And I'm going to be copying characters from S2 starting at index 0. So the S2 index is already good. But S1, the first index I'm copying into is equal to wherever the null terminator is, that is to say the end of S1. So I guess I have to walk along until I find that. So while S1 at my S1 index is not equal to the null terminator, uh, add 1 to my S1 index. You might also notice you could use the string length function to help you with this. But I like using these loops because it may be as easier on my diagram for me to map out what exactly I'm doing. Uh, OK, so my next step is I want to now copy from my uh, string S2 until, actually, we are going to refresh the diagram here just because we need, we need enough space to actually know what we're working with. All right. So currently, S1 looks like that, and S2 looks like this. And S2 could go off into the distance as well. We don't want to preclude that happening. All right, so what I want to do is I want to copy starting at index 1, 2, 3, 4 of S1 and starting at index 0 of S2. And at each step, I'll walk along and I'll copy one character. I want to keep going until I hit the null terminator on S2. 
2. And so what I want to do in total is I begin by copying the P here, the E here, the A here, then the R, and then I have to throw in that null terminator at the end. And I'm so sorry about this horrible looking uh, array here. I gotta, I gotta learn how to draw better, be quick on my feet with the drawing. Okay, so um, what the key thing to understand here is I'm actually, the, the loop I wanna write to do the copying should be contingent on where the end of S2 is. I'm walking through all of the characters in S2. So while S2 at S2 index is not equal to zero, uh, not equal to backslash zero, the null terminator, what do I do? Well, I'm obviously gonna to wanna to increment S2 index eventually. So we'll just put that there for safekeeping. So what I wanna do is I wanna copy a character from S2 into S1. And I always use the index I'm keeping in S1. So my S1 index, if I uh, revert to where I was a minute ago. So when S1 comes in, the S1 index gets positioned there by this first loop. And my S2 index is positioned here. Okay, so what I do is I copy from S2 at the index I'm keeping for S2 um, into S1 at the index I'm keeping for S1. So I copy the P into this position here. As I said, if you don't try and map this out while you're writing a question like this on the midterm, you probably won't get the uh, every index correct. So draw, draw something out, visualize it, so you know how many indices you need and you know how to actually work with them. Okay, so when I'm done, what I wanna do is I wanna set up for the next iteration. I wanna now copy the letter E from S2, and I wanna copy, so this, this gets copied, there's P. I wanna copy into this position. And so I guess what I need to do is increment both of my indices. All right. And then when I'm finally done, what do I have? Well, I copy the E, so that gets put here. I move both indices along by one, and then I copy the A, and then I move both indices along by one, and I copy the R, and I move both indices along by one, and that's where the loop ends. So at that step, S2 at S2 index equals the null terminator. So the loop ends. And you might notice up here in S1, there is no null terminator yet. I have to do one more operation, which is I have to install into S1 at the current index, because notice that when the loop ended, the index I'm keeping is pointing into the element where the null terminator would go. So I just set S1 index equals backslash zero. Backslash zero, there we go. Uh, and we'll try running this. Uh, I guess I may have to go back down and uncomment. All right, so as of the end of this step, the my output array contains, um, let's see, the word raspberry. And so we'll see what happens if we um, use string append. Uh, yeah, did I forget another semicolon here? Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what, I think I'm gonna blame a copy and paste problem for that. Uh, there we go. All right, so I first, I start with this copy of S1. So at the end of main here, I've just finished copying the word raspberry into my output array. Then I append the contents of S2 to that. And we can see there they are after I'm done, I have the entire contents of S2 appended to my output array. So just like before, I should observe, you could, if you don't wanna go walking and looking for null terminators, use string length to solve the same thing. String length in a couple of for loops. And you should consider trying that out because even if you like this style of loop, that is a good way of developing some dexterity working with loops on strings.